God that created life in the name of the Son, Jesus, that is life in the name of the Holy Spirit, God, the fire of life. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Just going to take a minute and make sure my papers are in order that uh, just flew off the um, lectern here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. In our gospel today, we hear, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. For a few weeks now, we have been reading from John about Jesus as the bread of life. It is the month of bread as a metaphor, and bread as a reality of God's presence in our lives. Today's gospel is not a repetition of the last few Sunday's text. It is very different. John is still exploring the truth revealed when Jesus fed the multitude, and he is drawing us deeper into the meaning of this revelation. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true blood and my body is true drink. This is a shocking message. To eat flesh and drink blood sounds cannibalistic. The idea of drinking any blood, let alone human blood, was repugnant to the religious leaders because the law forbid it. Jesus was saying that his life has become their own, but they could not accept this conclusion. Even the disciples had a hard time swallowing what Jesus had to say. They struggled with this. They could only think literally in one dimension. Jesus is always three-dimensional, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus pushes them to see and to think differently. Jesus pushes us to think and to see differently too, to ponder, to reflect, to chew on his words, if you will. What is described here is deep, deep intimacy with God. What God shares with us is something as close as the very substance of the divine makeup. If we were to imitate Christ in our relationships with others, it would be as if we were giving of our very flesh, of our very lives. Think about this for a moment. As parents, as lovers, as friends, in these deep, loving, unconditional relationships, you give of your very flesh and your very life unconditionally. During the fraction when the bread is broken and we are reminded that Jesus too was broken for us, giving us life, loving us unconditionally, in that moment today, think about that. In him we can find healing and hope. In him we find eternal life, the very life of God abiding in us and within us. In him we learn to love as we have been loved. John's testimony is a testimony to Jesus, the revelation and incarnation of God who has chosen to dwell among and in us. The Eucharist is life-giving because it is Jesus who gives it, and it is life-giving because it is Jesus himself who is given. The Eucharist draws us deeper into relationship with Jesus so that we may abide there with Jesus himself as the food of eternal life from the Father. Eating and drinking. Jesus uses one verb or the other over eight times in this passage. The language seems graphic, but Jesus has a point to make and he keeps repeating it so that our minds and hearts can comprehend it and let it soak into our being. He wants for us to take him in so that he is fully part of us through his words, his scripture, his teaching. And he wants us to join our lives to his so that we are fully part of him. Eating the living bread and drinking from the cup this is what the Lord's Supper symbolizes and the reality in which we participate when we take part in this holiest of meals. We abide in him and he abides in us. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. This verse in today's gospel is an invitation. The word abide means to wait, 
to remain, to sit, to dwell. And here it means so much more. Abiding has more of the sense of full personal commitment. It expresses a quality of solidarity, just that waiting could never convey. Imagine solidarity with Jesus. The Archbishop of Canterbury writes in his book called Abiding that Jesus invites us to surrender our wills, to recognize our dependencies, and above all, to exchange individual autonomy for life in, with, and through others in community. This is what has always brought me back to church each week, abiding in community and in Jesus, the giving and receiving of triune love. This is what has me read, rest, and abide in the teaching of Jesus, even when life is hard and I feel loved, unloved, and judged. Honestly, I don't just rest in the word, I chew on it. And sometimes I spit it out because I just don't understand God's will for me sometimes. But then I try again because I know that Jesus is right there with me on my journey as I know he is with you here today. It may not seem like it, that at times, but as we continue to trust in one another and trust in Jesus, this becomes more apparent to us. And sometimes it's hard to trust when we feel that the life has been sucked right out of us, when we are judged for who we love, who we are, what we look like, and how we act. Yet it is in those moments that we must remember this invitation to abide in Jesus, to trust and let the words of his love and guidance soak into every cell of our being, and he will abide in you, bringing nourishment in ways that you can't even imagine, even through suffering, hurts, and disappointments. The climb of the cross to our resurrection will be strengthened and our lives will be glorified by God. There is a story I want to end with today written by poet and teacher Mark Nepo. There was a woman who found a folded sponge all sucked dry and compressed and tucked inside was of the hardened fold was a message that she had been seeking. She carried the hardened sponge to the sea up to her waist in deep water and she watched it unfold and become life in the water. Magically, the secret of life became visible in the bubbles being released from the sponge. Whatever our path is, the secret of life will become visible to us as we rest and chew on the life with Jesus. And what will be revealed is what has been kept tight in us asleep and this will make it awaken. Like that sponge, our very heart begins to unfold as we abide in Jesus. And we cannot proclaim this good news unless we ourselves have received it, letting it seep into our being. We cannot expect others to be transformed by it unless we ourselves have been transformed. We can't offer love unless we first have received love. We love because he loved us first. To know the love of Jesus is not merely to know the story of his love, but to experience in our spirit that we are loved by him and that in his love the Father manifests his own love for us through his spirit that is poured out from our hearts to be a blessing to others. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. So today my friends come and join us at his table at this holy is of holy meals because the ground at the foot of the cross is level and there is room for all of us. Bread of life, hope of the world, Jesus Christ our brother, feed us now, give us life, and lead us to one another. Amen. Amen.